Hi YouTube! So, here I am with a new video on my series about GNU slash Linux and PCI, PCI Express. In my last video, we have taken a look at the LS PCI command and we saw it lists all the devices found on our system and it gives us a lot of information about the devices, like from which vendor from which vendor the device is and which kind of device it is. And today I want to show you from where LSPCI gets this information. But before we start, we have to take a look at the two different types of address spaces which are available on a PCI device. Well, the first one is called I.O. or memory space. And this is the type of memory over which you can control a device. For example, if you have a PCI card with a serial port on it, over the I.O. space you can access the registers to control it, like setting the baud rate or, send or writing the bits or bytes you want to send out the serial port. Or if you have a graphics card, over the memory space you can... Um, you can put your frames you want to display in, and so on. The second type of address space is called configuration space. And the configuration space gives you a lot of information about which kind of device you have, and you can set some settings, like for example, you can map the PCI device's memory space to the CPU's address space. But we will talk about this in a later video. So, LS PCI gets all this information about the device out of the configuration space. So, the configuration space of a PCI device is 256 bytes big and for a PCI Express device it's 4 kilobytes big. The first 64 bytes of it are standardized and called the PCI header. So let's take a look at a PCI header. Here I have a picture about the PCI header and as you can see here um, the PCI header are the first 64 bytes and here we can find some information about the device. So there are two different kinds of PCI headers. This one is the PCI header of an endpoint. PCI header of a bridge looks a little bit different, but the first um, hexadecimal 14, so the first 20 bytes are equal. And here we have a device ID and a vendor ID. So from the vendor ID, LS PCI knows from which vendor the device is. And the device ID is a, um, is a unique ID for each vendor and this will tell us what device it is. Down here we have a class code which tells us a little bit about the type of device we have here. For example, there is a class code for graphic cards, there is a class code for Ethernet ports and so on. Down here, this bit field header type tells us whether this is an endpoint or a bridge. For an endpoint, the header type here is set to zero for a bridge it's, it is set to 1. And down here we have some additional information, the sus subsystem ID and the subsystem vendor ID, which will give us even more information about the card. So now I want to write a little program which will print out the PCI header space for one device and I want to use um, the PCI library for this purpose. So I have already created a fork, a fork, sorry, a fork um, of the PCI utils GitHub repository, and here I will upload all my code so, so you can take a look at it if you want to. And here back on my PC I have cloned this repository, and here are all the files. Um, the PCI utils are shipped with an example code which will show us how to use the PCI library and I've just copied this example.c file and I've created 
this PCI header.c file because I want to um, give my new program the name PCI header. And I've already added some code because it would be a little bit too much to code everything online, but we will add some important features. So let me just open it up. Okay. So here I have um, created an, a struct which will represent one bit field in the PCI header. And it has the attribute name, the offset, which is the address of it, and the size in bytes. Because if you look back at this header here, we have some registers which are one D word long, but we have other bit fields which are just one byte big. Okay, here I have some prototypes I will use. And down here, I've typed all the registers of a PCI type zero header. So this is the header for an endpoint. And here are all the registers with their offsets and their size. And of course, I have done the same for the header type of a um, bridge with all the registers. And as you can see, the first 20 bytes are equal. But then there are some differences. But we will see that later when we execute the program. Down here, I have created an array of an array of two elements, which were points to our type zero header and to our type one header. Okay, here is the function which will print out the header. But before we take a look at it, let's go to the main program and look what I'm doing here. Okay, so here I'm declaring some variables. So first one is from the type struct PCI access and it's a pointer, and in here um, our PCI hierarchy will be stored. Here is a pointer for one PCI device, and here I have declared three variables for the bus number, the device number, and the function number. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm checking if three arguments were passed to my program, because I want to use the program um, in a way I call a program and I give three arguments. The first one is the bus number of the device I want to print the PCI header. The second one is the device number and the last one is the function number of the device. So down here we will get the PCI access structure. We initialize the PCI library and here with the function PCI scan bus we are scanning the bus and are looking for available devices. Down here, I convert um, the string arguments which are passed here to integer variables. And here is the function with which I'm doing it. So here I have two cases. The first case is I'm typing the hexadecimal values with uh, 0x prefix, and in the second case, I don't have this prefix here. Okay, and then I have to search for, for the device because I can only print the PCI header if a device with this, this bus, slot, and function number exists. And this is the first thing we have to do. We, I, we have to add the code in this function because right now it's empty. So the function has the following arguments. The first one is our access point to the PCI structure. The second is the bus ID, as the bus number, the device number, and the function number. So let's start. So now I will create a pointer from the type struct PCI dev, which is a pointer to our PCI device. And now I have to search the whole PCI bus for a device with this bus number, this device number, and this function number. So I will set my pointer device to the first device found um, in the PCI structure here, and um, there's a PCI access structure here. Then I have to test if 
the device is zero because if I'm reaching the end, the last device, after the last device, it will be zero. And the struct PCI device is a chained list with a pointer to the next found PCI device. So I have to set my device pointer to the next PCI device found in my system. Okay. And now all I have to do is I have to um, compare the bus number of my current device to the bus number I'm searching for. Then I will have to compare the device number to the current device number I'm looking for. And last but not least, I have to compare the function number to the function number I'm looking for. And if all three values match, I have found the device I'm looking for and I can return my current pointer. If I get through this loop without finding a device with the bus device and function number, there is no device available with this number and I can return null. So after searching for the device here in my main function, here we are, I'm comparing my device pointer with null because if it is null, I haven't found a device with the following bus, device and function number and I will return minus one and exit the program. But if I have found the device, I can now print the PCI header. So my function print PCI header has the following argument, um, only the device from which I want to print the PCI header. So here I'm declaring some variables I will need later. Here I'm checking if um, my pointer is pointing to a valid device or if it's null, because if it's null I can't print anything. And now we have to check whether or not the device is a bridge or an endpoint. So we have to read this byte of the configuration space. So, so it should be uh, 12, 13, 14, the 14th bit of the configuration space we have to read and check if it's zero and so it's an endpoint or if it's one and it's a bridge. Okay, so I will save um, the value in the variable I've called header type and to read from the configuration space I will call the method PCI read byte because I want to read a byte. The first argument here is our device from which we want to read. And the second one is the address from which we want to read. So I could type a 14 here, but uh, because um, the address is defined in the pci.h um, include file, header file, I can use the define pci header type to get the header type. And now the second thing I will do is, here I have declared a pointer of the type config space bit field and I will set it to um, types header type. So if we, if we have an endpoint here, um, this pointer will point to the start of um, the bit field list of an endpoint and if it's one, it will point to the type one header. Oh, and I forgot one thing here. Um, the first bit can be a one in some cases, the most significant bit. So I have to um, end it with this value here to get, yeah, to not accidentally get a value which is out of range. Or it's even more safe if I will set it to um, one here because the value can only be um, zero or one. So I don't get an overflow here. Okay, and here I'm just printing whether or not the device is a bridge or an endpoint. And now we have to go through um, the configuration space, dword by dword, and print out its content. 
So here I'm going through all the 64 bytes of configuration space. This up here is just to print out the definition of the PCI header space. Um, you can take, because I put it on GitHub, you can take a look at it for your own. And down here I will read the value. So I will store the result in a variable bit field value. And here I will use the function PCI read. And this time I don't want to read a byte, I want to read a D word. So I have to type PCI read long. So arguments are just the same as last time. The first one is the device you want to read from. The second one is um, the address we are interested in. And down here I extract the bit field of interest because we have read, we have read a D word, but sometimes our bit field is just a byte big, so I'm extracting it here. And down here I print the value and the table so it looks a little bit better. Okay, so we are done here. Now we have to add our new um, target to our make file. So let me open the make file and search for example. And here I will add PCI header. And here, let me copy these four lines here. PCI header. So our new target is PCI header. For this we need PCI header dot O and to get PCI header um, dot O um, we need PCI header dot C and let's fit. So now I will try to compile it and I hope I haven't made a mistake. Okay, it looks good. So now let's list all the devices found on my system and let's try to read the header of my network controller here. So I have to pass as arguments the bus number, the device number and the function number. Yeah, and I get this cool output here. Let's do it again. So okay, so now we see here the vendor ID is all zero, which is strange. Oh, I think I've made a mistake here. Let me double check, please. So where am I reading? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know. I've seen my mistake. This is not bit field value, it's just value. Let's build it again and let's run it again and now it should work. Yeah, here we get the vendor ID, here is our device ID, this is a class code and so on. So now we can dump the PCI header in a really nice way. Let's try it again for a bridge. So here we have a bridge. So and now this is um, the PCI header for a bridge. If we compare it to the PCI header of an endpoint, we see it looks a little bit different. A bridge only has two base address registers. And yeah, it's a little bit different. But therefore it has some things as primary bus, secondary bus, but maybe we will talk about it later. So that's it for now. In my next video, we will take a closer look at the remaining bytes of the configuration space. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one.